When I became a doctor, I always tried my best to be kind and professional. I was good at my job. I helped a lot of people. Before long, everyone in our community trusted me completely. Years later, I discovered that many doctors in the area all bought new cars and houses, but I still lived in an old family home and still rode a bike. My twins were growing up before my eyes. There were so many bills to pay, and I didn't have much money in the bank. When I thought about how much money we had, I couldn't eat or sleep. I wondered, why is that? I'm barely making ends meet, but these other doctors earn so much. Then one day, at a local doctor's conference, I was chatting with a few peers, friends of mine, and I asked them how they made so much. Dr. Sun said to me, well, a central leader said, as long as it catches mice, the color of a cat doesn't matter. In today's world, money is everything. Earning money is a skill in itself. And if you listen to your conscience, you'll be poor forever. The other one, Dr. Lee, said, make your patients come back if you want to earn more. If you're prescribing something, give them hormones. Eh, it'll heal them quickly, and it's legal. You'll get good reviews that way. More patients will come and more money. Another physician, Dr. Jin, told me, small illnesses, big cures. If someone comes in with a sore throat or a cold, prescribing something simple won't make much money. And it takes too long. Act as if it's pneumonia or the flu. Their prescription will earn you more. They'll feel better. Everyone's a winner. Each of them had their own ways of making money, ways I didn't know. It was disconcerting. Making money off patients like that? Is that how we should practice medicine? Was this not just completely taking advantage? But I also thought about their houses, the cars they had, uh, their vacations, and how shining they were when standing among others. Well, I just had my bike and no money. If I didn't do what they did, how would I make anything? I had to give my family a nice life. Besides, everyone was doing the same thing. Even if I kept my conscience, my peers wouldn't change. As I thought more about making money, my conscience faded from my mind. I was going to try out what worked for the other doctors. I overtreated my patients, giving them excessive medication. One day, a patient came in with a toothache. It was just gingivitis, and I could have given him some cheap medicine, but seeing how much pain he was in, I thought about what Dr. Jin said, small illnesses, big cures. So I prescribed some Western and traditional medicine and injections. I was afraid the patient would refuse such heavy treatment, so I pretended to be compassionate, and I said to him, it's an intense regimen, but it'll cure you. The patient just clutched his cheek and nodded, then paid my fee and left. Watching him walk away, my anxiety began to slowly and surely fade. I made more money than usual, and though I felt guilty at first, it soon went away. Another day, a young mom came in with her five-year-old son. He caught a cold and had a bit of a cough, so he only needed some antibiotics. But then I remembered that this wouldn't make money. So I said to the mother, your son has tracheitis. He needs an IV drip now or it'll turn into pneumonia. She was shocked at what I said to her, but believed every word of it without question. And I put her son on an IV drip for four days. When they left the hospital, the money I made was many times more than what it used to be. At first I felt bad. Then I thought about what the other doctors said to me. Ethics will get you nowhere. We all have bills to pay. Listen to your conscience and you'll be poor forever. When I thought about that, my guilt disappeared completely. Sometimes people have to lie to earn money, to survive.
I had no other choice. Later, a patient with the chronic bronchitis came to see me. She just had to take some simple medicine. But of course, that wouldn't make me money. So I told her, I'm sorry to say you need an IV. Otherwise it could turn into emphysema eventually. This could cause heart disease. With my recommendation, she was happy to go on an IV for seven days. I remember on the last day of treatment, she took my hand and said, thank you, doctor. I feel so much better now. After all this, if it had turned into emphysema or heart disease, then I would have been in trouble. When she said this, my guilt came back and my face went flush. It was bright red. But again, I thought, in this world of ours, who doesn't lie or cheat? Earning money is a skill in and of itself. When I thought this, my uneasiness and any concerns I had completely disappeared. In this way, I fell even deeper and deeper into my lust for money. After a few years, I went from poor to rich. I had a bigger house, my children got married, and life was good. But I felt guilty all the time. I wasn't at peace. I was always anxious, every day. I was worried that someone would find out about what I'd been doing and would tell everyone about me. It kept me up at night, and that made it worse. Then one day, a sister in our town preached Almighty God's kingdom gospel to me. And then I read God's words daily. Once at a gathering, we read a passage of God's words about honesty. I'll read it now. You ought to know that God likes those who are honest. In essence, God is faithful. And so, his words can always be trusted. His actions, furthermore, are faultless and unquestionable. Which is why God likes those who are absolutely honest with him. Honesty means giving your heart to God, being genuine with God in all things, being open with him in all things, never hiding the facts, not trying to deceive those above and below you, and not doing things only to curry favor with God. In short, to be honest is to be pure in your actions and your words, and to deceive neither God nor man. What I say is something very simple, but to you it is doubly arduous and difficult. Many people would rather be condemned straight to hell than speak the truth and act honestly. Little wonder that I have other treatment in store for those who are dishonest. Amen. Amen. How one's fate will work out in the end largely hinges upon whether or not they have an honest and blood-red heart, and whether or not they have a pure soul. If you are someone who is dishonest, someone with a heart of malice, someone with an unclean soul, then you're sure to end up in the place where man is punished as is written in the record of your fate. If you claim to be very honest, and yet never manage to act in accordance with the truth, or to speak a word of truth, then are you still waiting for God to reward you? Do you still hope for God to regard you as the apple of his eye? Is such thinking not preposterous? You deceive God in all things. How could the house of God accommodate one such as you, whose hands are unclean? Amen. 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 Reading God's words, I understood that the essence of God is faithful, and he likes honest people. God asks us to be open with him in our speech and actions. Whether in private or among others, we must accept God's scrutiny and not lie to God or others. We must be honest and trustworthy because only these people can enter God's kingdom. That's right. right. Thinking about what God requires of us, I realized how, as a doctor, I wasn't thinking of my patients and how to properly care for them, but about how I could use them to make more money. 
I conned my patients when I was supposed to be helping them get better. I exploited people's fears, made small sicknesses out to be serious afflictions, persuading my patients to prolong treatment and buy expensive meds. I made them waste money and they thanked me. I was a despicable, awful person. Even though I was making more money than ever before, I was always on edge. I was constantly paranoid and couldn't relax no matter what. I'd completely disregarded my conscience. Yes. Yeah. God's word showed me that God hated those who lied and deceived other people and that it would not end well for them. Only the honest can receive God's praise and salvation. From then on, I would be an honest individual. I swore I'd never con anyone again, and I'd stop over-treating my patients. I wanted to practice medicine honorably and honestly. Good. That's great. Great to hear. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A while later, I realized since I stopped lying to my patients and over-treating them, my income was much smaller. Back then, the hospital's ratings were tied to sales of medicine at the local clinics in town. One day, I was brought in for a performance review. The chairman accused me of dragging the hospital down and took down our plaque for being an advanced clinic. In addition, the hospital started giving bonuses out to its staff every month following that. If a doctor exceeded their monthly quota of uh, prescription sales, then 50% of the surplus would be their commission. I worked out in my calculations that if I went back to conning patients, I'd get over 4,000 yuan extra each month, which would mean an extra 50,000 yuan a year. But if I didn't go back to over-treating patients, I'd never hit the targets the hospital assigned to us. And I'd lose out on a lot of money. The more I thought about it, the more I felt like being honest. It was impossible in my line of work. I had to trick people to make money. And so I went against what God wanted me to do. I ignored my conscience and went back to my old ways. One day, a married couple brought their son in to see me. He caught a cold, which caused a sinus infection and needed only some simple meds. I acted as though I was concerned, took out my stethoscope and listened to the boy's chest and back. After my fake examination, I said to the parents very seriously, your child has pneumonia. There's liquid in his lungs. You should have come in sooner, a day later and he would have been in real trouble. Good thing there's still time. We'll put him on an IV drip and he'll recover. And like that, I was back to conning my patients again, out of their money. I'd made the boy's illness seem dangerous. When I finished my shift, I scolded myself. I was scared what I'd done would be exposed. So I spent every day on edge. Sometimes I'd tell myself this was the last time and after that, I would stop. But I couldn't resist the temptation of money. And I couldn't stop committing these sins against God. My life was a real struggle. I knew for a fact that God demands honesty from us. But no matter what I did, I couldn't stop tricking them, my patience. Later, I read a passage of Almighty God's words. Born into such a filthy land, man has been severely blighted by society. He has been influenced by feudal ethics and has been taught at institutes of higher learning. The backward thinking, corrupt morality, mean view on life, despicable philosophy for living, utterly worthless existence, and depraved lifestyle and customs. All of these things have severely intruded upon man's heart and severely undermined and attacked the conscience of man. As a result, man is ever more distant from God and ever more opposed to him. 
man's disposition becomes more vicious by the day. And there is not a single person who will willingly give up anything for God, not a single person who will willingly obey God, nor, moreover, a single person who will seek God's appearance. Under the sway of Satan, instead, man does nothing but pursue pleasure, giving himself over to the corruption of the flesh in the land of mud. Even when they hear the truth, those who live in darkness give no thought to put it to practice, nor will they seek out God, even if they've beheld his appearance. How could a mankind so depraved have any chance of salvation? How could a mankind so decadent live in the light? Amen. 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 And another passage. After several thousand years of corruption, man is numb and dull-witted. He has become a demon that opposes God. To the extent that man's rebelliousness toward God has been documented in the books of history, and even man himself is unable to give a full account of his rebellious behavior. For man has been profoundly corrupted by Satan and has been led astray that he knows not where to turn. Even today, man continues to betray God. When man sees God, he betrays him. And when he can't see God, he betrays God. There are even those who, having witnessed God's curses and having witnessed God's wrath, still betray him. And so I say that man's sense has lost its original function and that man's conscience, too, has lost its original function. Amen. 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 God's words revealed to me that the society we live in and education we've received are all Satan's corruption. Remember, greed is good. No matter what anyone says, money comes first. And every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. These are all of Satan's philosophies. Influenced and perverted by these greedy mantras, our values become twisted. We place money above everything. We abandon our very morality just to make an extra buck. So we lie and we cheat becoming more and more selfish, deceptive, vicious, losing more and more of our humanity. A doctor's duty is to cure their patients as ethically as they can. This is the bottom line for human conscience. True. True. But under the spell of money, most doctors overtreat patients and overprescribe medicines, even hormones. They trick their patients. Although they can't see the harm at first, Overusing medicine and hormones over time will severely damage the body. Too much medicine can be toxic to a patient and often causes chronic diseases. It's a form of slow murder. The more I thought, the more scared I became. I thought of when I was young, a brand new doctor. Originally, I wanted to help the community. But these mantras, Every man for himself, money comes first. As long as it catches mice, the color of a cat doesn't matter. We're Satan's way of taking control of my conscience. And I soon lost any sense of ethics or reason. I turned a common cold into walking pneumonia just to make more money. If someone could be cured for a dime, I cured them for a quarter. It got so bad that Satan corrupted me past the point of conscience and reason. My disposition grew more and more malicious. A wolf in sheep's clothing. I cared more about money than what was right. Yeah. After accepting God's work, I knew God required that we be honest. But I still couldn't resist the siren song of money. And once again, I began cheating my patients. I saw how Satan's poisons had become a part of my very nature. If it weren't for the judgment of God's words, showing me how hateful it was to lie and the peril I was in, I would have continued living as a fraud. I would have been remorseful my whole life and would have gone to hell as punishment for all my sins. Right. 
I finally understood how important it is that God asks us to be honest. Through honesty and being sincere, we have integrity and dignity. Being honest was the only way to put our hearts at rest. Yes. Once I understood His will, I prayed to God. I wanted to start over, forsaking myself, to practice the truth and be an honest person. Amen. Amen. One day, a patient from another town came to see me. After I examined him, I then determined that he had a venous leg ulcer. Oh, that's not a fun thing to have. Mm. Yeah, it's usually hard to treat, but I knew a treatment that would clear it up for no more than one yuan. My patient told me he'd seen many doctors and some charlatans and spent thousands to no avail. Hearing this, I started thinking, he's already spent thousands of yuan, so if I charged him a few hundred for the cure, that wouldn't be so bad. It'd be a shame to let this chance go to waste. As I thought this, my heart leapt. Just this last time, from then on, I'll be honest. But as I prepared to write him the prescription, I thought about the resolution I'd made before God. I began to pray. Dear God, I still want to lie. I know I shouldn't keep betraying you and my promise. God, I need strength to put aside my greed and be an honest person. God's words then came into my mind. People who genuinely believe in Him always have God in their hearts, and they always carry with them a God-loving heart. Those who believe in God should do things cautiously and prudently, and all they do should be in God's requirements and satisfy His heart. They should not be headstrong and do whatever they want, that does not befit saintly propriety. Amen. Amen. This passage of God's words, it showed me that true believers revere God in their hearts, are honest and dependable. They don't lie or deceive, and they accept God's scrutiny. Everything they do is with saintly propriety, and they conduct themselves as God requires. They don't dishonor God, rebel against Him, or offend Him. Amen. I finally became aware that money was Satan's tool to enchant and corrupt me against God, once more to make me continue my evil lies. But I knew I couldn't keep rebelling against God, going against His demands. I was so thankful for the guidance and enlightenment of God's words. Yes. And so I prayed to God once more. Oh God, you have brought this patient here today in order to test me. Before, I lied and cheated for the sake of money, and I lived the ways of Satan. But after today, I want to be an honest person, humiliate Satan, and please you. Amen. Thanks be to God. After praying, I said to my patient, although this illness is hard to treat, I can prescribe something. I guarantee it's a cure. It only costs 30 cents. Thank God. If this had happened before, and I was asked to give this prescription, I would have charged for 10 times that amount. But now, with God's words, I now had the confidence to live an honest life, to be an upstanding individual. I wasn't going to cheat others or con them again. I remember that day when the patient left with the prescription. I felt so happy, at peace in my heart. Thanks Amen. be to God. Amen. Ten days later, the patient came back and he said to me, I'd been everywhere to get help with my ulcer, but never had any luck. I didn't even use all the medicine. And look, my ulcer's all healed. It's a miracle cure. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell everyone whom I know about you. Not only do you know your stuff, you're affordable. After hearing these compliments, I knew that this small change in me was because I'd been guided to the light by God's words. Amen. Amen. I remembered how I used to think. Remember, greed is good. No matter what anyone says, money comes first. 
and every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. I was brainwashed by these toxic mantras. I lost my conscience, my integrity, and my morals. I was cold-hearted. The words and salvation of God restored my conscience and reason and helped me regain my principles. Amen. Thanks be to God. From then on, I treated every patient without tricking them. I prescribed only what they needed and always gave them an honest diagnosis. I kept my promise to be honest. And sure enough, I saw more of God's blessings. I felt at peace, grounded, and free of my anxiety. Also, my patients told others about their experience and gave me good evaluations. People from other surrounding towns came to me for treatment. Only telling the truth and being honest makes someone a true human being. Rejecting lies and speaking truth was the first step to being an honest person. And I know the work I have to do to make things right and live according to God's requirements. Thanks to Almighty God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. An honest life. Thank God. Being honest brings us great peace. Mm -hmm.